So Don says he uh, wants to give Ruby a wash. We've had a little bit of an improvement in the humidity and the temperature here this morning. Um, so it's sort of pleasant enough to be outside to want to fool with her. Plus she's dirty. And he's hoping uh, any errands I run over the next few days or trips I take or whatever that I can uh, run between the showers, so to speak. So, yeah. I appreciate him wanting to make her look good for me. Just to confirm, we are at 2018.20 now. Yeah, I don't think it's telling me anything here I didn't already know that the owner's manual can now be accessed from the Tesla T. And, uh, you know, they've made some mobile connector improvements. I, I don't know that there's really any new stuff here in the release notes. his schoolwork binder and the bin of papers and notebooks and stuff and he is sorting out what's worth keeping and what we can get rid of we both agree we don't want to be doing this a day before school starts back in the fall so it's better to get her done now we've had this uh, Spiro BB-8 for a long time uh, we'd like it probably don't use it as much as we should mostly because we're afraid we're gonna break it um, but it works with the remote app on the phone and it's really fast and it's way cool And I was in Guardian Angel and I found this Disney store equivalent paid three dollars for it thrilled that it works It has a little separate remote um, Johnny says he likes the Spiro a lot better uh, But who would want to pass up a working talking moving BB-8 uh, for three bucks, right? So so still pretty cool I remember when these came out at Christmas that folks really went back and forth about which one was better. And uh, certainly for older kids, and if you can afford it, probably the Spiro. But if you find this other one at the thrift store, then that might be a deal too, because it does work. You want to move it for me, Johnny? Sure. I mean, Johnny got the screwdriver out and put batteries in it and got it going all on his own. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Spiro's faster though. Right, the Spiro's faster. The Spiro's for older kids certainly that want to do tricks. Um, but this other one is cool also. So I uh, wanted to clarify something about yesterday's um, maintenance that we had on Ruby. Um, first off, Don and I did not do the 12K service. We didn't do that because we blew through 24K miles in 10 months. That's why we didn't do it. Because um, we kind of looked at the service as being a one year thing as far as wiper blades and the batteries and that kind of thing. And we didn't need to do that twice in one year. Um, secondly, we did not prepay for any maintenance. We chose to just pay as we went with the service. So um, there are packages that folks can buy for the service to be done, um, but we didn't have that. And third, the uh, 1025 cost that we paid was some combination of the two-year service that we actually asked them to do and adding in changing that uh, front and rear drive uh, unit gearbox oil. 
Um, so it was somewhere between the cost of the one year service plus the two year service. It was not quite both of those services combined. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, we, um, I thought gave quite a bit of thought to purchasing the uh, prepaid service, but I knew um, when we bought Ruby that it was going to be for the while the boys were in school it was going to be a high mileage car because the intent was she was going to basically roughly do 100 miles a day or 500 miles a week and the thing about the prepaid service is uh, certainly we could have taken it in exactly uh, you know at the 12 24 36 and 48 thousand like the like they have you do but chances are we would have done all four of those in two years in the two years and um so I think if you're a high mileage driver, if you know you're going to be a high mileage driver, I think pre-purchasing the uh, service is probably not, not beneficial because it is really a combination of, it's not just pure miles. I mean, I'm sure Tesla would, somebody could probably argue is, oh no, it's pure miles. It doesn't matter. I, I think, uh, you know, weather, wear and tear, how many bumps you hit, things like that, all that play into it. It's, it's just not one number. Uh, in fact, uh, my GMC has a, a computer oil change thing uh, that tells you when to change the oil, and I've always followed that, and the oil changes on that thing go anywhere from like 6,000 miles to eight to 10,000 miles, whereas if you read the owner's manual, to change it every 3,000 miles. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, I'm not faulting Tesla. I, I, it's fine, but I think the, the pre-purchasing is great if you're a normal... You're not going to drive your car more than 12,000 miles a year. I think it's ideal. But if you're like us and you're driving basically twice that every year and you're going to do that for the first four years of the car, uh, <clears throat> I think that the, what we did is basically have your car serviced once a year, have whatever the maintenance is, is done. And I think that's great because, you know, changing the windshield wipers after four and a half months, I don't really think. They need to be changed after four and a half months. I'm not even sure after a year, 10 they, months or a year, year, ours weren't really worn out. They weren't giving me any trouble. Right, so I, I question that. And um, one more thing. I do know that some car uh, brands, uh, BMW I think comes to mind, you don't have to pay for scheduled maintenance uh, during the warranty period. And I would tell you this is one of the things where I think Tesla is a little bit behind the curve on two for two things a other manufacturers of high-end cars are including the maintenance and the second thing is remember one of the advantages of electric car is it's supposed to cost you less than maintenance and so I'm not saying yesterday's was uh, unusually high or anything but you know basically um, paying a thousand dollars a year for scheduled maintenance uh, you know that's pretty that's a significant amount of money. So uh, I, I think that, um, you know, some Tesla needs to give some thought to their scheduled maintenance uh, and the cost of that scheduled maintenance. So as Don said, the, some other car companies, high-end luxury cars, uh, probably include maintenance uh, and Tesla doesn't include the regular maintenance and we can argue whether or not they should. But I just want to say that I think I've heard from a lot of customers out there on the forums about Tesla doing right by them whether they had to or not. And I don't think BMW is doing that or these other luxury. I think they charge you if it's not explicitly covered, they charge you. And I think if you go to Tesla and you have some sort of an issue, they really work through it with you. And sometimes they cover it for you. I've heard a lot of really great stories out there on the forums about Tesla doing right by their customers. So if they want to charge us for maintenance, but then any problem I go in with, they're going to be stellar and helping me work those problems out. I think I personally, I can, I can live with that. So I did bad by Don yesterday. Uh -oh. I should have recorded a clip where he said that the reason why Tesla has such a hard time in the news is because Tesla doesn't advertise. He says that about, oh, every other week at least when they're getting beat up and, um, you know, that advertising dollars really control the news that we get, whether we're talking about cars or anything else. 
uh, you think you're getting honest news and you're probably getting whatever advertising dollars pay for. Uh, you know, even on our local news, uh, WRAL, we enjoy their news. We watch them all the time. I would say that we, we're fans. Yeah. But we know that they, who advertises Mark Jacobson. Oh, yeah, all those guys. Toyota or Ford. You know, these guys pay for the 6 p.m. news and the 11 p.m. news. And so how bad can you trash talk them even if they did something wrong if they're giving you advertising dollars i mean some of these news places i think they want to do the right thing and then it's still hard for them to do the right thing so there's a tweet uh from elon about the problem with journalists being uh you know that all these big car companies fossil fuel cars are paying for advertising dollars and tesla doesn't advertise so who are you gonna do better by the people paying for you to be on the air or tesla you know, and I think, I th I'm sure there's a struggle with the integrity of some journalists who really want to do the right thing and then some companies is just out for money. But anyway, Don had already figured that out. He knew that. Elon knows that. A lot of you other smart viewers know that too. And I just wish I had recorded Don saying it yesterday when he said it before Elon made the tweet because, you yeah, know, Don knew well, too. I just simply say it's the, the biggest myth in the world is the concept of the free press. The press is not free. It costs money to print those papers. It costs money to write those stories. So it's not free. It's the for-profit press is what we have. For-profit is made by delivering an audience to advertisers. So you write stories that will deliver an audience for the advertisers. If it doesn't deliver an audience for the advertiser, you won't be writing it very long. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can only think of a few guys that uh, we get news from where I really want to believe their integrity is better than their salary. Um, oh, well, Richard Engel from the Middle East right. that reports for NBC currently, oh, I'm not I think, is one of those career journalists where he tries to do the right thing, but... Uh, I think they're few and far between. They're, it's yeah, real hard no, for them. I, honestly, I'm not, I'm not faulting the journalists. They, they really want uh, to do the right thing. I mean, they're probably honestly in it to, for the, you know, to benefit mankind. Uh, I, I totally don't doubt their motives, but sooner or later, you got to eat. Yeah. And, um, you know, you got a wife and kids and they got to eat. And so at some point, you know, you've got to, uh, you've got to decide what puts food on the table and uh, you know as long as and this is a problem with like the Koch brothers and all those other things it's that's what's going on in, in medical research you know you're an oil company there's you can you can pay for research that doesn't say that clearly proves there's no global warming and it you know it's whoever has the money you know uh, you know, gets to set the agenda. If you don't have money, you know, other than maybe the Pope or some religious organization, you're not going to get very far. Yeah, and to be clear, we don't think Tesla should start advertising either. We like the model. We think people ought to learn to be smarter oh, yeah. about where they get their news, I guess. Right, uh, right. I, I'm, I guess, you know, you have to be skeptical about everything. Um, is Tesla perfect? Absolutely not. Is Tesla trying to do uh, the right thing by uh, creating sustainable transportation? Absolutely. Is, is during this transition time, is that going to upset the apple cart and cost people jobs and profits and stuff? Absolutely. It's just, you know, you can't stand in the way. Uh, you know, the Leadites, you know, tried to get rid of the, the looms. I mean, you're not going to stop progress because you know it's low cost always wins and you cannot stop it so i had said a few days ago that these came in the mail and that we were going to um review them they uh, were recommended someplace we were watching and they're made in the usa and they inexpensive off of amazon so today's really the first day i've had a chance that we've been out in the car and it's been sunny you know, we are, had a lot of days of rain here. So, um, yeah, Johnny and I are going to drive to Cary and go to Best Buy and see, just do one more in-person review of some gaming um, computers and uh, 
then uh, we're probably gonna get the order placed for whatever it is we want. But uh, yeah, Best Buy Carry is our target and we'll try to give these sun visors a review on the way. But, so I've stuck one of the tuck visors over here on the driver's side window. Um, I was, you know, feeling some heat on my shoulder. We're sort of headed north and it's later in the day. It's uh, going on three o'clock. So, um, you know, the sun is moving around to the west side and there was sun coming in over here. And I would say that I noticed an immediate coolness of it blocking out the sun that was on my shoulder. Um, you can't see through these, but of course you can't see through a real sun visor either. And it's up high enough that it's not blocking my view. I don't think it's blocking my view. No, it's not blocking my view looking over my shoulder at traffic or directly out the window. So a win over here, you know, and this is not a Tesla thing, right? All cars have a window on the left and sun can be bothersome. Uh, that the Tesla sun visor will go over to the left too, but you know, this that's pretty cool. So far, so good. Johnny put his up in the, out of, you know, sympathy, sim sympathy and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Symmetry. Uh, symmetry, yeah, that is the math word I was looking for, symmetry. You gotta love driving when the sky looks like that. So I suspect the one thing you have to be wary of is you've got that, you know, tuck visor up there, but you get ready to get out of the door. So be ready to, go. yeah, there you go. I actually <laughs> no, didn't want it to, I actually didn't want it to fall on the ground and get gravel on it, but I think we demonstrated it's not too bad. Uh, if you, you know, if you're going to get out, then obviously you got to take, you should take them down before you open the door. So, you know, good for times when you're going to be in the car more than five or ten minutes for five or ten minutes I'm not sure I'd stick it up there all right I'm not sure uh, this is kind of like a boy in a candy store it's just electronic candy <laughs> basically Don's Chromebook that I got him a couple years ago at Christmas this is my first time seeing the uh, new Lenovo yoga uh, hinges it's pretty interesting all right here's what Johnny cares about so Johnny particularly wanted to try typing on this Alienware keyboard. So these really cool speakers are electrostatic and they are made with Mylar. It's pretty fascinating how the sound comes out of the grill up here. And then I of course had to notice this Macintosh equipment over here. So Johnny's made up his mind what computer he wants and I'm just trying to digest it and walk around Best Buy a bit. These are Dyson fans. I've not seen these before. I'm sure they're a fortune and they're also very cool. Comes in two sizes conveniently. Yeah, that fan's $549. Oh, it, well this little thing, it heats and it cools. I don't know, it's cool, but it's not cheap. Wow, <laughs> who knew they made Hexbug BattleBots? Tombstone versus Witch Doctor. Tombstone always wins. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. So tell me about this. Tell me about this computer you've talked me into. So it's like an it's an i7 8700 K. Hey. Um it's got um 16 gigabytes of RAM, I believe. Yeah. Um and it's got and it's got a, a 1080 GTX to, card, 1080. not a 1060, and not a 1070, but a 1080. Not, and it's gonna cost us. Don't talk about price. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> a lot. It's a deal. It's a deal, though. Right. It's cheaper than the Alienware. It's cheaper than the Origin Neuron, and it's got more, more stuff. Yeah, it's a big purchase, though. I'm stressing more about this than I was about the Tesla. So this is the box we're getting, an iBuy Power Trace 941. There's no monitor or keyboard up here that makes sense to show you, but uh, yeah, this is the box. Pretty cool stuff happening on the inside of it, huh? It's a big box, but it fit between the two seats perfectly. So to be clear, this is an early birthday present and me and Mr. Don recognizing that Johnny did spend hours working hard on school this year. And with the understanding that we will be doing things not computer related this summer, although there will be plenty of time for computer stuff. So how are you feeling over there, bud? Stoked, <laughs> flabbergasted, bunch of things. I did not expect to get today. I'll be honest, I did not. 
Yeah, I think one of the things for me was buying local means I can return local and that kind of that sort of sold the deal. So navigation on Ruby showed this really weird path to get home and um, I was skeptical and normally then when I bring it up on Google Maps on my phone, my phone says something else and I go with the phone. <laughs> but this time the phone said the exact same things and I really think they're both routing me the fastest way and around a bunch of traffic here at rush hour. So I'm very pleased with the nav update yet again. So Johnny says he's really liking the options of putting the uh, the little sun visor things up there. He has the one on the side and then he has one up here on the side too. So I pulled in at South Park here where the sun is right in our face and um, Johnny says that this is somewhat useful on uh, the regular Tesla visor. You can kind of stick it in up there. Um, but I don't see, you know, the sun is kind of low in the sky. I don't see any way, I mean, yes, I can stick it up there at the top, but it's really pretty loose up there, so I don't know that it would stay. And yeah, I can sort of stick it in here if I wanted to, but again, it's not a good stick. So the most useful place for this really is the side window where it goes up really well and stays up there. That's not coming down. Or even over here on the side. Um, if there's, you know, you're driving and the sun is at that angle, I've had that happen. But if you're looking for it to help with up here, no, not, not a big enough piece of material and not enough points for it to stick into. I mean, we got with our Model X a sunscreen that snaps in up there and goes in and out really quick. And, you know, that's the right thing for that spot. This is this is not going to work there but I, I do see if you're driving on the interstate the end of the day the sun's off to the west where this could be useful certainly on the side useful or like what I did yeah and maybe for what Johnny did I mean that's a really soft thing so if it flies at you I don't think I'm not too worried about injury uh, in a stopping situation although you know that is not as secure as the other two things so I'm glad we got these and I could recommend them for quite a few uses but just not all the way up so we're gonna go get the computer out of the car right. it's on all right johnny's going through the very first uh boot up and install stuff in the united states yes it's all lit up over here we don't have it where it's going, but we'll do that later. So Johnny's cool computer lights have their own personal light color remote. Hey, Johnny. Hey. So we're going to get a longer Ethernet cable in the morning. It's like 140 degrees in the attic right now. And um, the computer is going to end up over here in the corner. And we're going to get a swing arm for the monitor. You know, we got a couple days worth of stuff to get it finalized, but... So far, so good. He's installing Steam and Epic Games and other things on here, and uh, he's getting her ready for, for using. What do you think? Just don't chew the wire or you're in trouble. So, uh, yeah, I was able to cook a couple of burgers really quick for the guys, and um, Johnny's got stuff still downloading on the new computer. He, uh, it was a little slow right after Windows loaded for the first time, but he rebooted it, and it's fast like it should be now. I think I did fast.com, and it was like 56 megabits per second speed, so, yeah, wow. <laughs> Maybe I should plug my laptop in. Johnny and I are headed to the, um, adults and teens Taekwondo class from 7.30, um, excuse me, from 7.45 to 8.30. It's later because it's for older people. Um, but, you know, we just couldn't make the earlier class. And with the balloon festival in town tomorrow, we're probably not doing Taekwondo. So I thought, yeah, we really got to go tonight. And, um, so Johnny's got stuff downloading, so he's tolerating being away from his computer. Okay. So I have the tuck visors over here on the driver door while I'm driving but you know my problem is is when you're not using them where do you put them in the Tesla because they won't fit in the glove box we tried and uh, they're, they're not gonna fit I, I mean maybe they would fit in the door panel but then you know you don't want them all scratched up and you couldn't put anything else in there 
So I don't know where they would go. Uh, I have a blanket over my center console um, so it won't get scratched and that's just how I like things. So it's kind of folded in half. I suppose I could slide mine in the middle of the blanket there. They'd be out of the way. I don't know. Um, that's the only thing is where would I put them when I'm not using them that they wouldn't be in the way. This is how I felt when we got out of Taekwondo. And this is how I felt when mom said yes to the gaming computer. <laughs> so rock types are hatching right now and Johnny and I have uh, caught enough the leaps to evolve. Yay! Woo! No! Oops! <laughs> Come on, Johnny. <laughs> silly, silly. I guess it's nice 861 to evolve. Yeah, that's what mine is too. Evolvely. I don't really know what this Pokemon's going to look like. I don't. I'll be surprised. And it does the white ball glitch. Oh. There it is. Huh. Cool. Johnny is escorting Tux out of my way. Always look for the cats when I come up the driveway. Every time. <laughs> that quick into carry and back to go to Best Buy and into town to Taekwondo and back was only uh, 48 miles today.